oceans cover over 70% of the Earth's surface and they play a vital role in regulating the Earth's climate and its weather patterns. But melting ice caps are affecting our oceans, which in turn is affecting our climate. Hello and welcome to Ocean Science in Your Kitchen. In this short series, we'll be using simple experiments to investigate how changing ocean currents are affecting our climate. Water in the oceans moves in patterns that we call currents. Winds drive ocean currents in the upper 100 meters of the ocean surface. However, ocean currents also flow thousands of meters below the surface. These deep ocean currents are driven by differences in the water's density, which is controlled by temperature, thermo, and the salinity, haline. So this process is known as thermohaline circulation. Salinity is the saltiness or amount of salt dissolved in a body of water. My name is Patricia, and in this video, we'll be investigating salinity and density. Are you ready? Then let's investigate ocean currents a bit further. For this experiment, you'll need a glass filled with 250 milliliters of tap water, one fresh uncooked egg still in its shell, and we'll also be using some table salt. Add the egg to the glass of water and watch as the egg sinks to the bottom of the glass. Using a spoon, Remove the egg from the glass and set it aside. We'll be using the egg again later. Add one and a half tablespoons of salt to the glass and grab your spoon and stir until all of the salt is dissolved. If you are using table salt, the mixture will turn cloudy, but just leave it to stand for a few minutes until it clears up. Get the egg and place it back into the glass. This time, instead of the egg sinking to the bottom, it's floating at the top. So what's different now? Why is the egg floating? The answer, it's all about density. Density is the amount of material packed into a certain amount of space or volume. Let's consider the following example. Here we have two cubes which have equal volumes. We'll call them cube A and cube B. Now both cubes have been packed with particles, but as we can see, cube B has more particles packed into it compared to cube A. So we would say that cube A has a low density, while cube B has a high density. Liquids, like water, have a density too. Whether an object sinks or floats in water depends on the density of the water and the density of the object. An object with a higher density than water will sink, whereas an object with a lower density will float. When we added the egg to the tap water, we saw that the egg sank to the bottom of the glass. This tells us that the density of the egg is greater than the density of the tap water. But when we added the egg to the salt water, the egg floated. We know that the egg's density remained the same in this experiment, so this tells us that the density of the salt water mixture is higher than the density of the tap water. But why did the density of the water increase when we added salt? The particles in liquid water aren't fixed like a solid, so there are some spaces between them. When we added the salt, the salt particles mixed with the water particles and spread out evenly. The addition of the salt to the tap water increased the mass, which in turn increased the density of the water. This is why salt water has a higher density compared to tap water. And there we have it, the relationship between density and salinity. Why don't you have a go and do the experiment yourself? As an added challenge, try to get the egg to float halfway in a glass of water. If you do try the experiment and our extra challenge, do take some snaps and tweet them to us at ROG Astronomers and remember to include the hashtag Ocean Science. Well, that's it for the first installment in our Ocean Science in Your Kitchen series. Join us in video two, where we'll be investigating the relationship between salinity and the sea. 
And if you do complete experiment one, then hold on to that glass of water because you'll be needing it in our second experiment.